Irish Media Network. We entertain. Good morning. Welcome to the Cannabis Review Show. Uh, again, I'm your host, Patrick McCartan. It's great to have you join us today. Uh, we're coming to you from a uh, very, very warm San Francisco in California, the epicenter of the global cannabis industry. And uh, again, the purpose of this cannabis review show is really to give you insights into the various different areas of the cannabis industry, from the cultivation, the manufacturing, right over to the products, the brands, uh, and the investment world too, which is uh, an, uh, an area that men, not many people know too much about. So the purpose of, of today's show is really to take a deep insight into the, the investment world. And our um, guest today is Ian Hector McNeil. And um, Hector is the co-founder and CEO of Han ETF. Uh, which is Europe's first independent white label provider of ETFs in Europe. And uh, they've been very busy on the cannabis front, and they've been building a medical cannabis and wellness fund uh, out of the UK, out of London Stock Exchange. Uh, and they're currently carrying assets in the value of around 10 million, which has uh, risen over 15% in May, which is very interesting. And I'd like to, Hector to talk to a little bit more about that. But without further ado, uh, I'd like to in invite Hector to the show. Hector, welcome. Hey, Patrick, how are you? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. How are you doing yourself? Yeah, good. I bet you've got better weather than we have at the moment. <laughs> Pretty humid yeah. overcast, but uh, uh, we've had we've had fantastic weather. Probably the only thing that's uh, saved us during during the uh, the lockdown really is. Uh, the weather's been pretty reasonable in this part of Europe, which is which is pretty unusual for the uh, for the time. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no, all, all's good. Thank you. Good, good, good. So you're based in London currently? Yeah, so I'm based in North London. Uh, you know, I'm based in a place called Enfield, uh, which is sort of zone four. Lived here ever since I moved down from Yorkshire. I'm a I'm a Yorkshireman through and through. Uh, moved in 1989 and uh, stayed in the stayed in North London area on the basis I think I've still got a bit of North in me. If I'm uh, if I'm in that area, and uh, funny enough, I uh, lived in Dublin for four years as well. Uh, early part of my career, uh, early two thousands, uh, I was working out the IFSC there, living in the back of Simmons Court Road near the RDS there. So, uh, so I know it pretty well. Uh, but uh, well, yeah, no, and the, the company itself, it's uh, based in the centre of London, just near Moorgate, between Moorgate and Bank. So that's where we are. Excellent, excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed your your time in Dublin, a great city. Uh, a city I grew, a city I grew up in, but um, uh, so so tell us a little bit more about uh, your fund, your medical cannabis fund, and and how you and what enticed you to get involved in in cannabis on the investment side. Yeah, no, it's probably probably worth just taking a step back and talking about Han because that, that'll give a bit more context for what. Sure, we're yeah. Doing. So uh, Han stands for Hector and Nick. So you've got half of the uh, the duo uh, here and. Uh, Nick and myself, we've uh, set up uh, four ETF businesses uh, to date. Uh, and an ETF is interesting because it's, uh, it's uh, called Exchange Traded Fund. So the fund part's easy. Uh, the fund part's uh, fun as well as easy. But it's um, basically, uh, you know, when, you, when you, you know, you're investing or you're you know, paying for your pension or whatever, you know, you go and buy from, a, from an asset manager, you'll buy a fund like a, UK equity fund or a, or a European equities or, you know, a, uh, a Far East uh, ex Japan type type fund, you know, and you can get it from the usual suspects like the Fidelities and, you know, uh, uh, Irish Life or somewhere like that, you know. Uh, but it, but an ETF is uh, the, the clues in the exchange traded bit. It's, it's a fund, but it actually trades on the exchange. So in the same way you can go and buy uh, British Telecom or, or uh, Barclays Bank, or uh, you know uh, any any of the, the uh, equities on the exchange ETFs you can buy as a, as a, as, a, as an equity. So you can go on your trading account, you can access the exchange, and you can buy a share in a, in the uh, ETF the same way you can buy uh, normal shares. And what it's allowed people to do is uh, set up uh, portfolios and uh, and um, uh, investments in a sort of diversified fashion using lots of different products. It's probably the fastest growing area of uh, financial services at the moment. I mean, it's. Uh, I started uh, in ETFs early 2000 uh, when I was over in uh, Dublin, and I think the total uh, as what they call assets under management, so the amount of money that people have invested in ETFs was about uh, 20 billion in Europe. So quite a big number, uh, but but not enormous, and it's now about one trillion. 
today. Uh, and globally, it's grown over that time from 200 billion to uh, 6 trillion. Uh, and there's a report out by Bank of America before Christmas saying that they think by 2030, it'll be, uh, it'll be about 50 trillion. So, so it's one of the fastest growing industries. And you can pretty much buy whatever you want in ETFs. You can buy uh, the FTSE 100. Uh, you can buy the Isaac 20. You can buy the S&P 500. You can buy gold. You can buy, uh, in fact, we're going to do it tomorrow. We're listing uh, the world's first crypto uh, ETF tomorrow. We're doing a uh, Bitcoin uh, ETF. So you can pretty much get any sort of asset. And then you put those together as a portfolio. Now, what happened uh, about two, three years ago, obviously, the, uh, the uh, cannabis industry came in massively into focus uh, across the world. And, uh, you know, it wasn't long before uh, you started seeing on the other side of the Atlantic uh, ETFs uh, representing the uh, both the uh, broad cannabis space uh, and also the medical space. Um, obviously, uh, it was all to do with what, what's legal and what's not legal in whatever country. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work around that. There's a lot of issues around U.S. banks, uh, federal laws versus uh, state laws, as you well know. Uh, so that took a long time to get these products out because it basically you need to create a structure that could uh, you know uh, do due diligence and look at what it was holding and then do that in a coherent fashion. So you got a couple of pretty big products. Uh, first one was out of Canada from an outfit called Horizon. Uh, they brought a product out and that was originally uh, medical focus. Uh, and then uh, you started to see some products in the US. So it became quite a big sector, one of the fastest growing uh, sectors in the ETF market. Uh, but you didn't see any in Europe. Uh, and the reason you didn't see any in Europe is because unlike Canada and the US, it's not a single country, it's 30 odd countries. So you've got a lot more rules and regulations and legal aspects to it than, uh, than exist over there. So we took a long time to, uh, to sort out the, uh, the various rules and uh, regs around it. Um, and actually, just to give you the complexity of it, it's an actual Irish domicile fund. So you've got to obviously meet the Irish laws. Then we cross-listed it into Germany and the UK, so we needed to meet the UK laws. Then we passported it, which means that you don't list it, but you make it available for sale in the Nordics, in Scandies, Italy, etc. So again, we had to make sure it was uh, legal from that perspective. So we felt very comfortable with the medical marijuana space because in most countries in Europe, you know, there's varying degrees of legality there. And then we created a very sophisticated legal screen that made sure that we didn't hold securities that uh, were in, you know, partially in recreational or, or whatever that would be, you know, particularly fall foul of the uh, Proceeds of Crime Act rules in uh, in the UK. Now, where I think the product's quite neat is that if you talk to a lot of the uh, uh, stockbroking firms out there, they were getting a lot of demand from their clients uh, buying uh, US and Canadian uh, cannabis companies. Now, the trouble with that is that they may be legal in uh, Canada and the US, but lots of them aren't legal in the uh, in the UK, and, and by uh, uh, by definition, under the Proceeds of Crime Act, you're supposed to let the uh, Serious Crime Office know if you uh, you uh, investing anything that's uh, uh, got underlying illegal activity. And obviously, most people didn't know that. So, um, so I think a lot of the uh, stockbrokers are very reticent to offer uh, cannabis stocks because you know they couldn't do the due diligence behind the uh, companies. So, so essentially, what I think uh, uh, the product, which which is called the uh, Medical Cannabis and Wellness UCC ETF, uh, the ticker is CBDX. Uh, what I think that does is it sort of takes that legal risk away from uh, uh, from clients when they're investing in the sector, but in in turn, you know, makes it very efficient for them to uh, to buy, you know, fifteen companies uh, in one in one in one transaction in one share. So a bit of a long winded story that, but it's. Uh, it's it was been a pretty tortuous eighteen months to get that to market and and uh, uh, Patrick just just for in indication the normal uh, period to get a fund out is about ten weeks so it was ten weeks versus eighteen uh, eighteen weeks which is, which is pretty hard work very interesting yeah and then who were some of the constituents and some of those companies that you focused on obviously medical is the is the only focus for now of course until things change uh, from a regulatory standpoint globally. But um, I'm assuming that they would be mostly U.S. and Canada focused. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So, so part of the rules that we had to agree, particularly with our what they call a custodian bank, and the bank is the bank that actually holds the underlying shares on our behalf, uh, is actually Bank of New York, is BNY Mellon, uh, based in Dublin. 
And those guys are obviously governed by federal law. So they were pretty um, adamant on the types of companies that we could hold uh, in, the, uh, in the ETF. And originally, uh, they've said that we must only hold uh, 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 companies that are uh, either US or Canadian listed. And they have to be on the main exchange as well. So they have to be on the TSX, the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. So there are some minor exchanges, you know, that uh, I think it's, uh, is it the NEO exchange? I can't remember in uh, Canada, but there's a one that's got less stringent requirements and we weren't allowed to add that. So the only UK company we actually have uh, in the, or non-US uh, or North American company is GW Pharma. Um, and uh, obviously that's a British company, uh, which, uh, you know, most people wouldn't even know it's a cannabis company, I don't think, but uh, they see it as a normal pharma stock. Uh, but it's uh, it's around 10% of the index, uh, but it's actually listed on the NASDAQ in New York. It used to be listed on AIM in London, but it moved to NASDAQ uh, a fair few years ago. And uh, because it's on the NASDAQ, we can include it uh, in the index. We're pretty hopeful that over time we should be able to add more uh, more sort of Australian UK, uh, Israeli type companies because I mean you know, probably people don't know that uh, uh, I think the UN published a report a couple of years ago, 2018, that said that UK was the largest exporter of cannabis in the world now, 49%. Which I think if you ask most people in the street, they would have no idea that the UK and it's you know obviously most of it's driven by GW Pharma, so uh, yeah. most people would uh, would struggle to uh, to know that. But a couple of other stocks we've got in there which are quite interesting, I think, is uh, Scott's Miracle. You know, Charlotte's Web, you know, quite a fair few companies like that. We used to have Kira, uh, Kira Life Sciences in it, dropped out. But I, th I actually think that will be back uh, probably in the next rebalance because the way the product works, it is a set of rules in the index. So it hasn't got a human being choosing which uh, stocks go in. It has an algorithm. And the algorithm, once a quarter, picks stocks that are based on the uh, where it's listed, the, index, the industry it's in. And then also, how much trading does it do on a daily basis? So it has to have a minimum, what we call liquidity. So it must have a minimum amount of shares that it trades a day. And then it also must have a minimum market capitalization uh, to be in the index. Now, we tend to try and set that relatively low for this sector because there's obviously a lot of you know, smaller companies that we hope are going to grow. But, uh, but as you well know, that the industry came off quite sharply last year. Uh, you know, so a lot of these companies that were at very high values and were, uh, you know, were trading very at all time highs, they've they've come up, they came off nearly 60, 70 percent. So a lot of companies that were originally in the index came out the index. Uh, you know, so unfortunately, Kira Life Sciences is one of those that uh, just fell out the index last week. Right. Uh, but but I do feel that uh, you know, as you mentioned, the uh, you know the sector was up, the actual ETF was up 15 percent last uh, in May, which was a bit of a recovery from the. Uh, from the softening in the market, particularly around the coronavirus, you know, so it's had a great recovery there. So I suspect in the next quarter we should see quite a few uh, few stocks coming uh, coming back in there. So we expect it to be like, a, you know, we, for instance, we have an e EM e-commerce uh, emerging market e-commerce ETF, and I would say because it's quite that's quite a growing sector. It started off around uh, thirty uh, companies in it when we started it five five six years ago. It's now got 90, and it adds about 5 to 10 every uh, every rebalance. So I suspect what will happen in the uh, cannabis sector as it keeps growing and uh, developing and, you know, as the legal side of it gets uh, more clarified across the world, you know, you, I think you'll find there'll be more companies, particularly out of Europe and beyond, that start to come in this index. So I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, five years from now, you know, it's got uh, 80 to 90 securities in it, which would be which would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. And then if you look at some of these companies, for example, I mean, if we take Charlotte's Web, for example, they're, they're one of the biggest brands here in the US. Yeah. Um, and what, so how does the, how would it affect the, the weighting and the, well, obviously the algorithm would take care of this, but if Charlotte's Web decide to move into the recreational uh, for some of their brands, would that mean it would automatically remove um, Charlotte's Web Holdings from yeah. the, the yeah. Wood. yeah, Wood, yeah, because effectively it would become illegal uh, in right. the uh, yeah, you know, in the UK and probably most of the other countries in Europe where it's uh, listed. So uh, we actually uh, uh, had that incident pretty much after we launched the product uh, earlier this year with uh, Namaste that was in the index, and then it diversified into the uh, into the rec sector. So we we took that out within three days of uh, of uh, that being spotted. What's pretty good about this is what probably what I should have said is we've done this um, 
uh, product, uh, you know, the hand, hands of white label providers. So we don't uh, have our own IP on the platforms. We work with asset managers who have that IP. And we and on this product, we worked with a uh, with a great company out of out of Toronto called Purpose Investments. A purpose have a have a long history of working in the uh, cannabis sector. And what's great about this product, even though the uh, the index chooses the securities that go in it, the companies that go in it, they actually, because active managers, they know every company that's in the sector. So they can uh, quite easily, because uh, obviously algorithms get some things right, they get things wrong. You know, so having somebody that's as, as, that can deep dive in the sector as these guys, it's really quite solid in terms of making sure that, you know, we don't breach the rules, you know, particularly around that legality. You know, uh, and they uh, they were very quick to spot that. You know, they knew what was going on in the sector, and they uh, they pulled that stock out. So that would definitely be the case. And equally, if if a company was, you know, uh, a diversified uh, cannabis company, but then it sort of narrowed and focused on uh, on medical, then uh, then that would certainly be uh, be allowed uh, from that perspective. I mean, funny enough, we have got a more general cannabis uh, uh, fund in the pipeline that would include REC. Uh, but it, unfortunately, it's stuck at your uh, regulators, the Central Bank of Ireland, at the moment, who are uh, asking for a bit of clarity on uh, on various uh, various aspects. But we're pretty hopeful that uh, sometime this year we'll get that out. Now, that probably wouldn't be allowed to be uh, 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 available for sale, probably in most of Europe, but it would definitely be allowed in Germany. So we'd probably be focusing that uh, that product in Germany as we uh, as we launch it and get it out there, really. Sure, sure, sure. I, I mean, if you look at the 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 impact of CBD and and other cannabinoids on the health system and the the endocrine system, and given the 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 impact that COVID has, and it's highlighted the importance of health and wellness globally, this is a huge, huge opportunity for for the health and wellness industry of all different types of products to be uh, moving forward, and and for 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 all of us to be able to build our immunity and our health. Are you seeing an increase in demand for, for CBD, cannabidiol products in the UK since the pandemic began? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, I think, you know, you only have to walk into Boots or any of the uh, the big sort mm. of, uh, you know, general store pharmaceutical places. And you'll see, you know, quite a bit of branding now on that, uh, you know, and as, as, as I've told you in the past, I'm a big, uh, big rugby fan and, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have an association with a with a club in Toronto called Toronto Wolfpack, and they brought their own CBD oil brand uh, uh, product out called Rugby Strength. You know, uh, off the back of this, and I know a couple of the Saracens lads in uh, Rugby Union, uh, they've got their own brand out as well, and, uh, and I think it's gone down very well. Uh, this stuff. Uh, I mean, I think the uh, the only the only issue I think holding this back is that the um, you know the usual drug uh, uh, application and, and sign off process. Doesn't really work for uh, for the cannabis industry. It's not, you know, it's uh, it's uh, you know, it's more for a synthetic uh, synthetic drugs, you know. And I think the, you know, I mean, I think GW Pharma, you know, they've had two uh, two drugs approved now by the FDA, you know, and I think they're sort of leading the way. But I think it'll just be a, it'll be an avalanche at some point, you know. And uh, you know, more and more people are swearing by the uh, by the properties that uh, you know CBD oil and products bring to the market. And I think whether it's food or whether it's uh, wellness or, or healthcare, you know, there's going to be an explosion of, uh, of things. And as you say, I think, you know, the Corona lockdown actually, uh, you know, because a lot of our products we have at uh, Han ETF are uh, what I call mega theme products, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, we've got products focused on sort of e-commerce or cloud technology or, you know, uh, uh, cybersecurity, uh, genomics. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a healthcare innovation fund as well. All these things, I think, have been sped up by about three or four years by this uh, lockdown, you know, and I think it's really focused people's uh, attention on areas like the uh, the, the medical and uh, wellness area of, uh, of, of cannabis that, uh, that I think we're sort of expediting this along. And I think people have, uh, you know, people have adopted that more time to look at it, you know, uh, are looking for more of this sort of uh, solution. So so I definitely think there's a, there's a boom time, uh, you know, on the way here. And I think it's probably... Probably the product and the uh, industry is catching up on the valuations from two or three years ago where they went insane. I always thought it was a bit like a gold rush, you know, it was a bit like a dot com boom, mm. you know, uh, but we're sort of catching up on that. And I think the companies that are left and going to be developing in this space are real companies now, you know. So I think you're going to see a lot of growth, you know, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and proper fundamentals uh, underlying these companies and the industries that are going forward. So I've done a real watch this space. 
I mean, what's really interesting for us, actually, when we developed this uh, ETF, because ETFs are sort of replacing the mutual fund wrapper, and the mutual funds have been around for a long time, uh, normally when you bring an ETF out, there's already uh, an equivalent in the uh, mutual fund world. But actually, funny enough, uh, the uh, CBDX, the, uh, the uh, cannabis ETF we brought out, you know, it was the first fund in, uh, in cannabis in Europe. So, you know, it's the first time, I think, in the ETF world uh, where uh, ETFs have beat the uh, mutual fund world to the, uh, to the sector. So I do think it's, uh, it's quite a groundbreaking uh, scenario. But I think the, the challenge we've probably got is the sort of mainstream investor probably still has a lot of stigma over uh, over the sector and we've got to try and educate them you know on uh, what the story is and you probably saw last week we did a, a pretty interesting webinar with uh, bmo uh, kira life sciences and uh, and purpose investments the guys out of canada and the whole idea we're doing four of those uh, series and we're taking the the different sectors of the wellness and uh, and medical uh, parts of cannabis and trying to educate people on what they're about you know what the opportunities are and what's happening particularly in the us and in europe you know, so we think it's a big, big education. And I think, you know, channels like yours are awesome for this because I think they uh, they really get the message out and, you know, uh, take something that's, you know, probably been uh, hidden under a stone for a long time and, uh, you know, really getting out in there into the mainstream. And uh, I think you and I both know that 10 years from now, uh, you know, uh, uh, CBDs and cannabis is going to be as mainstream as any, uh, as any uh, you know, uh, food stuff or, or drug or, uh, or whatever it is out there, you know, even to the... Uh, even I would dare to say, even in the recreational side, I think it's just it, it, the doors open now for me. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I think what's what's important for viewers and, and listeners to understand about cannabis and medical cannabis versus recreational, um, you know, the, the the major issue is around THC. With you know, in the UK, that's a that's the that's the cannabinoid that's causing a lot of the the issues of of progression with with the home office and with the uh, with the regulations there. So um, just to explain it once again is around if we have a full spectrum product which contains all of the cannabinoids, including THC, CBG, CBN, CBD, and many other hundreds of cannabinoids, they are. It, it, that's where the problem is, is because THC is within that spectrum of cannabinoids. If we have a broad spectrum, we remo remove the THC, um, that allows for um, a, a greater chance of getting those products into um, a strict, uh, jurisdictions where the policies are quite strict. And then if we've got obviously got a CBD, which is pure CBD, and no other cannabinoid, usually it's, it's hemp derived, or it can be uh, from, from some of the cannabis plants, um, that's where there's no problem at all. So I think it's 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 still we're learning an awful lot in the UK. We're learning a lot, an awful lot around the world as we figure all of this out. What is legal? What is not legal? What is medical? What is a mainstream CBD brand? What is going to be a recreational brand, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's that's super interesting. And I mean, we're watching UK very very closely. Obviously, what happens in the UK can have a direct impact on the on the Irish market too, of course. Um, but just flipping back over to your your own progress and and the growth of your own ETF funds and the, particularly on the cannabis side, um, where are you seeing some of the next uh, countries globally that you're looking to to invest in? And I believe New Zealand is, is one of those countries. Is that correct? Yeah, I think. I, I mean, I suspect it'll it'll follow the global yeah. pattern of agriculture. To be honest, you know, and obviously uh, New Zealand's a hugely uh, uh, agricultural driven country. You know, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, to do that, you know, but I think the, uh, you know, where I'm seeing interesting companies are in places like Australia, New Zealand, you know, Israel, uh, you know, they've obviously got a big focus on uh, on agribusiness as well, you know, and, and you, Israelis are incredibly innovative as well. I mean, they're, they're probably the most entrepreneurial Absolutely, yeah. planet, you know, so, so there's that. I think Germany as well, actually, uh, you know, Germans seem to be, uh, I think we had a, we, we landed on a bit of a good one with, uh, with uh, the, the, uh, uh, CBDX uh, listed in Germany first because all the uh, cannabis shops are all called Hanf H A N F. Everyone thought Han ETF was a uh, was was a, was, was designed to have that uh, product out there. It was completely by accident, but uh, but everybody thought we'd uh, we'd done that on purpose. But uh, but I definitely think you know there's uh, there's a much more open environment there for uh, for that uh, you know and then uh, and then you know maybe uh, 
the uh, you know Holland and uh, and Spain as well. I think you know you're going to see a little bit of activity there. But again, I think it's largely driven by uh, by agriculture. I mean, you you know everybody saw the uh, tomato farmers in uh, Canada, you know, completely convert their farms over to uh, yeah. hemp, you know, when uh, you know when they suddenly became multi millionaires as a result of it. So uh, so I think there's a lot of people looking at that uh, at that success. And I mean, I think that's the that's probably the challenge to the industry as well is the you know the um, you know the uh, the ability to create quality products you know and uh, and I think that's where the Canadian government made a bit of a mistake. I mean, I don't know if you ever heard that pun, but they said that you know uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, most of the uh, uh, cannabis shops and most of the al- alcohol uh, outlets in uh, in Canada are state owned, you know, and uh, and when they they got into the cannabis business, did uh, the Canadian government. And they, I think they lost thirty million in the first year, and everybody says the Canadian government's the worst drug dealers in the world. You know, so, uh, so I, think, I think they've gone more into the private uh, private sector there now. So, uh, but anecdotally, you know, this is a lot of you know the industry finding its feet and you know trying to figure out the right way to uh, you know to uh, to put its footprint down there and uh, and service the public. You know, so it, it, what's really exciting about it? I don't know what you feel about it, but it's it just seems. I mean, I went to. Um, when we first launched this product, I went to um, an event uh, called First Wednesdays at, uh, at uh, I don't know if you've ever been to those, but it's... Uh, I have, yeah. They hold it in the IOD, and there was hundreds of people there. It was ridiculous. There was, you know, there was... But it was people... I felt that half the people in the room was thinking, well, there's really something in this, but I don't know quite what it is. You know, they were all trying to scrape around, trying to figure out what their, you know, what their opportunity was in the, uh, in the space. And I felt it was really electrifying, actually. You know, I hadn't really... Coming from a state sort of uh, city background, you know, uh, even though we 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 think we're disruptors and we're doing different things and all that sort of stuff, but then when you see these guys, it really is, you know, I had people from you know farmers coming to me from Cyprus to you know uh, private equity guys looking to invest in the space or whatever. It was, uh, and it, even when we launched the product, we had people you know send us emails saying, "Look, I've got you know a, a big load of." Uh, of hemp, I need to sell. Can we, would you guys be interested in buying it? I said, well, that's, that's not that's not how our product works. But, uh, thanks for the offer, but yeah. uh, but it was uh, you know it was it's 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 quite wild west actually. It was uh, really quite interesting. I thought, but uh, it'd be interesting how it all sort of institutionalizes and, and grows. I just hope it doesn't become the domain of uh, Coca Cola and you know uh, all these huge you know conglomerates who just absorb it as part of their uh, you know their bigger empires really. Yeah, well, I mean, that is the direction that it is going. Obviously, there's a number of different corporations that have already um, have their own brands. Heineken Lagunitas, for example, which is a THC non-alcoholic beverage uh, here in California. And there's many other other uh, uh, corporations across all industries exploring all of this, particularly when the, fe- the federal government blow the whistle on legalizing cannabis uh, recreationally in the States. That will probably have a domino effect um, globally. Um, who knows, obviously COVID has, has, has changed the dynamics of, but shifted, the, shifting the dynamics of power globally, but um, it's an interesting area for sure. And um, I think, you know, when we look at the investor world, I think particularly Canadian investors, they, they there was a huge, huge loss of equity and, and investments over the year, well, over the past year and a half from, uh, just the wrong approach to to the cannabis industry. Many thought it was a quick, rich, overnight, uh, green rush. Um, it, it was for a very small few, but for the most, most lost their their uh, their shirt actually on a lot of these investments, which yeah. which um, which was a good thing for the industry in a way um, because it brought us back down to earth. And like you said at first Wednesdays, and they've they've been putting on some great shows there. We need to build this organically and sustainably and in the right way and a collaborative way. And um, obviously everybody wants to do well and make money, but it needs to be done in the right way. If corporations are to take this seriously and if it's to mature and evolve uh, the industry, it needs to be done in the right way. So we need to have the right players basically at the table. Uh, First Wednesdays have been hosting some really great conversations for for the last year and a half. And as the kind of the cannabis um, Europa Conference too. They've really been hosting some great conversations around that. And I think next week our Prohibition Partners Live, our our friends there at PPL are are, are hosting a very very exciting uh, virtual conference next week, 
which um, uh, everybody should be tuning into, by the way, because it's going to really host a, a global conference and, and it really contextualize what's happening uh, from, a, from a multitude of standpoints in the industry. Um, so definitely tune into that. Uh, one question I have for you, and I've been very busy and, and very active in, in Colombia. Um, Colombia is seen as a one uh, right currently is the, is the leading low cost producer of soon to be EU GMP, uh, which is pharma grade. What, where are you seeing Colombia um, on your radar, or is it is it um, is it a you know from the investor world is it a is it still tarnished with the with the old reputation? Yeah, I mean, I think I mean I think uh, <coughs> Kieran Life Sciences they have um, correct yeah. That some of their, so I suspect it's that sort of model where it's you know a company that's uh, you know probably based in one of the uh, you know uh, developed parts of the world you know that's using uh, you know uh, land and agriculture in other parts of the world. But uh, I, I you know I, I don't think it'll be uh, quick before we see a Colombian company coming through to the uh, through to the index uh, or through that, that level because I just think it's there's too much stigma around uh, you know the corporate governance and. You know, they're set up there, and uh, you know, it wouldn't be an exchange that we picked it from. So it would have to be a Colombian company that would list on the New York Stock Exchange or whatever. I want to pick up one point you said before about people getting burned as well. I mean, that's one of the big benefits to index investing that, you know, you, you by definition, diversify. So you don't pick winners. You know, and actually, you know, I always say to private investors, you know, you are going to be the last guys to know about the good companies, right? You know, when you've got massive corporate organizations who have got information flows that you probably get a week later. You know, uh, so you're much better in a diversified uh, product that uh, you know has some good rules to it. You know, and it might be, might not be you hit the uh, the home run every time, but you know, you you certainly will not get in at the uh, not get in at the top, and you know, uh, not get out at the bottom, right? So you know, you hopefully save yourself uh, some of that shock and all that we saw from before. But you're right, everyone was just chasing the next big hot uh, new issue coming to the market, and, and that, that's that's what kills investors. It's happened. With the internet boom, you know, with lastminute.com and companies like that, you know, and uh, you know, investors investors seem to never uh, never learn from those experiences. So, uh, so I think that's right. But I think places like Colombia, you know, are, are bound to be on the radar from a production perspective. But I think the uh, the corporates that we'd be looking at would be uh, would be much more established uh, countries, I think, than uh, than those. Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, Israel, as you mentioned, is 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 huge on innovation, and uh, there's some really great things coming out of Israel right now. It's a huge amount of R and D. Um, some some stories that I've heard on the back end, which I which I signed on NDA, but there's some big big impact on on current situations that the world has experienced. That cannabis may be able to contribute in a positive way too. Um, they're doing some serious studies on that. Um, Israel's going to be great, and obviously Lesotho and, and South Africa. Africa is really going to come on to online pretty soon, even though it's already been um, uh, it's 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 been well. Lesotho's been very very active over the last two two to three years. So, have you seen any action or any interest from from African countries companies? Not 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 as yet. Uh, not as yet. They've not come on the radar yet. Uh, so they're probably too fledgling. For us at this point, I mean, in other products we have, in some of our emerging market uh, products like the emerging market e-commerce and uh, and uh, some of those types of products, we have got a uh, we have got Africa holdings, African holdings, you know. Uh, but they're uh, funny, and again, they're an example. They're U.S. listed, so. Uh, uh, but I think they, um, you know, things like um, in the e-commerce as well, we have got Mercado Libra, that's a South American uh, company, but it's U.S. listed as well, so. So I think there needs to be a little bit more uh, uh, growth and establishment of those businesses, but uh, but certainly you know I think it's going to be a global industry, and uh, and as such you know the uh, the the uh, indices will have to cover that at some point. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, Hector, listen, I appreciate you coming on to the show uh, and giving us your insights, and it, it's a super super interesting area that again not that many people know about. Um, we'll yeah. definitely be watching your fund. Uh, and we'll be watching the evolution of Han ETF. And you must come back on in a few months to update us on where those funds are. Um, you know, hopefully we'll see some 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 growth in those funds, and uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see some more rugby players hi highlighting the value of of these these bombs and for their their pain and a lot. You know, obviously they they suffer from a lot of uh, injuries and 
Um, I mean, we're seeing that over here, obviously in the States, there's a huge amount of um, advocacy for, for cannabis uh, in all its forms for, for NBA players and football players uh, and, and hockey players too. So it's a, it's a very, very interesting and, and exciting industry that is, is, is evolving very, very quickly. So Hector, listen again, appreciate your time. And uh, we, uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon. Thanks very much, Patrick. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, listen, that's another uh, uh, show for the Cannabis Review. Thanks again for join, uh, tuning in. Uh, we're going to explore some really interesting other conversations around cannabis in the next few shows. Uh, we're going to talk with some, uh, some social advocates uh, in the States around racism and, and cannabis and how many companies in, in the cannabis industry have either stepped up to the played and talked about racism or, or and, and many haven't and it's a very very obviously uh, divisive conversation so we look forward to tuning uh, you tuning in then and uh, we hope you enjoyed the show uh, in and investments are a very very key area to 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 understand and learn about if you're interested in the industry and uh, again we want to thank our sponsors edibles era uh, and if you are interested in sponsoring the show, feel free to reach out to us at info at regenibus.com. And you can follow us at, at Regenibus on IG and YouTube. And you can follow Irish Media Network at, at Irish Media Network. Um, but again, thanks again for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Irish Media Network. We entertain.